Hi. Uh, so today we are going to do an experiment on synchros. Now, uh, what is a synchro? A synchro is nothing but a three-phase alternator. Uh, so, but this is in a very smaller range. Smaller range is in the sense its capacity is very very small, and it's normally used for experimental purposes. These synchros, uh, they are used for error detection. What is the basic principle of a synchro? Is it will convert the angular position of your rotor into a corresponding voltage. So, uh, and at the same time, if you want to add two different angular positions, you can do that. Also, if you want to subtract two different angular positions, you can do that. So, what is the internal construction of a synchro? Is so this is the study setup that we are having here. So in this particular study setup, you are having. So this is the study setup of synchro. What it has is. it has got the input power supply here and it has got a rotor part it has got a stator windings so this is a three phase alternator your rotor is dumbbell shaped rotor and the stator part here is a y, y connected uh, three phase winding now in order to switch on this what happens is you have to separately switch on the rotor supply here so this is the main power supply line similarly you have a different setup for the transmitter and the receiver section this you can use it as a transmitter and this you can use it as a receiver and you can use it vice versa also now what is this position is this will give you the exact angular position of the rotor that you are having similarly on the receiver side this particular position will give you the actual position of your rotor here so this is the setup we are going to do three different experiments here one is we are trying to find out what is the nature of output voltage across these three windings when we give some kind of a rotor voltage now you know that these are three phase windings right now when i apply a ac voltage here what will happen there will be some say some zero voltage induced here because this flux and this flux they are parallel to each other there will be some say 90 degrees of uh, angular uh, relation between these two windings so there will be some amount of voltage that will be generated and similarly there will be some amount of voltage that will be generated here and the phase difference between all these voltages will be 120 degrees why because the mechanical arrangement of these stator windings are also 120 so the first part of the experiment what we will do is we will supply some voltage here and then we will try to change this angular position when you change the angular position of this what you are literally doing is you are trying to rotate this particular rotor when you rotate this particular rotor the induced emf across these stator windings will change so that we will keep on monitor so what are the three voltages you have is that is voltage across line s1 and s2 this particular voltage voltage between s2 and s3 between these two lines then voltage between s1 and s3 between these voltages so we are going to monitor all these voltage at different positions here so that will be the first experiment second experiment will be what is the effect of switching on the uh, rotor part on the transmitter side on the receiver side so which means we will be interlinking these two setup transmitter and the receiver setup we will try to change the uh, position of our uh, rotor on our transmitter side and we will monitor the position of rotor on our receiver side and we we might get some error so from that particular basis you can find out what is the error in the uh, rotation so what is the parameter that will help you in finding out the error is that error will help us to find out how much flux is getting wasted so that is one uh, method and the third experiment what we will do is we will do the reverse what i mean by we will do the reverse is that is we will apply some rotor voltage here when we apply some rotor voltage here right so we will change the rotor position here 
when we change the rotor position obviously the reverse must also take place right reverse means as you change this this will also change obviously but what we are going to do is we are not going to allow this to change we are going to hold it with our hand when we hold it with our hand where there will be an effect where there will be an effect is the there will be a reverse emf the back emf will start applying across this particular rotor and the rotor emf will the the stator emf that we are giving and we, we, the one that we are trying to rotate will alter the stator emf shear which at one particular point of time what will happen is both the emfs will cancel each other so that these are the three different types of experiments we are going to do so first let me do the first part of the experiment so the first part of the experiment uh, as i said we are going to study the effect of stator voltage on applying the rotor voltage so what you should do is first switch on the power supply right so this is the main power supply you should switch on now once you switch on internally itself there is a connection between this these two knobs and these two knobs right so either you can as i change this you can find out that there will be a supply voltage or what you can do is you connect this supplies positive and there is nothing like a positive and a negative here so you can supply it here let's like we take a larger wire all right okay now this is in the zero position this is in the zero position now what i am going to do is i am going to use my multimeter to find out the voltage across this if uh, so first let us find vs1 and vs2 but vs1 and vs2 i will not get anything right so if you look at the uh, multimeter setting here it is zero volt so first i should switch on the power supply rotor supply in fact when i switch on the rotor supply what happens there is an emf that is induced here and there will be some amount of voltage that is induced based on the location of these windings in certain winding they will be parallel so no voltage will be there the voltage are, there will be some at times they will be perpendicular to each other so they will have a maximum voltage so first i will show you what kind of voltage here so between 1 and 3 it is zero voltage here right close to zero now let me change it to 1 and 3 you see here there is some amount of voltage so 68 voltage is here similarly between these two if i see also you will get around the similar kind of voltage 68 69 right so but you must note here that between s1 and s2 voltage and s2 and s3 voltages are lagging by an angle of 120 degrees we are just seeing only the magnitude part okay so what we should do we must do this tabulation right so this is the manual part that you can see so the first we are going to do we are going to create such a tabulation here so you will do different rotor positions here and then you will monitor the terminal voltages across three different terminals first let me keep it for 0 0 we have already measured right we just measured that it is we just measured that it is 0.1 volts and then it is 54.2 and it is 53.4 this is under some test conditions now now let me do the second case which is equal to 30 degrees so for 30 degrees what should i move here is i am going to rotate this to 30 degrees i hope you can see better when i moved it to 30 degrees v s1 s3 voltage is 40.9 okay so v s3 s1 is close to 40.9 so here it is already filled so it is 30.4 degrees now similarly with keeping this as a position right it is better that you take your hand right and leave it now you monitor the other two voltages i am going to monitor s1 s3 s1 s3 is 36 voltage so i note it down and then similarly i note s2 s3 also i am getting 80 voltages here 79.2 i note this voltage i repeat this process now what i do is i change it to 60 degrees i change it to 60 degrees again i note down 
uh, what S2 S3 here and then I note down S1 S3 here and then I note down S1 S2 here I repeat this process right I repeat this process such that I cover all the different angles such that I cover all the different angles till 330 degrees okay so our first part of the experiment is done now coming to the second part of the experiment second part first before that let us switch off the rotor power supply right now I am not going to monitor any voltage here I am not going to monitor any voltage here we are trying to find out how the response is between the transmitting part and the receiving part so this is this helps to find out the error part so how do we do very simple experiments here we connect the S1 terminal of the transmitter part that is the stator part to the receiver part stator S1 so S1 to S1 we connect now similarly S2 to S2 we connect and finally we connect S3 to S3 right now what happens please note here I have switched on this particular power supply you might have studied three phase to three phase transformers right when you connect a three two three phase to three phase transformer now what will happen is see I am supplying a voltage across this side there is an induced EMF across these three phase windings on my transmitter now the circuit is closed right the circuit is closed the current will flow like this and then the circuit is closed now whenever the circuit is closed what happens there will be a current that will be flowing so there will be fluxes that will be generated across this winding this winding and this winding now what will happen now see, we have, see, please note we have not supplied any voltage we have not supplied any voltage to our rotor part so if you want to supply a voltage here then I should switch on here now what will happen is because there are three different EMFs it is a three dimensional EMF that are rotating you know so those will interact with this and you will have an average EMF that you can see across this now let me have the multimeter and I will show you that there should be there should be some mean EMF across this rotor part there is an EMF here there is an EMF here but all the EMFs are getting cancelled why because the it is a vector sum of all these currents or all these EMFs so the vector sum of this plus the vector sum of this plus vector sum of this in a three phase winding it will be equal to zero and you can see that it will be equal to zero even however if I rotate if I rotate also what will happen is a different EMF will be generated across this right at times this may be higher this may be lower and when I rotate this may be higher and this may be lower but still the additive sum of all the fluxes will be zero and that is why you are getting a zero voltage here but that is not the experiment is what we will do is we will switch on the rotor supply now when you switch on the rotor supply bringing this bringing this knob back to zero right I am putting this knob back to zero okay now what is our objective right we have switched on the rotor supply also we have switched on the rotor so transmitters rotor supply and receivers rotor supply both the supplies are on main power is also on so now I am applying this is the zeroth position we are going to tabulate this one so the observation table here corresponds to we have to find out the angular position or the observation table for synchronous transmitter and receivers rotor section meaning we will change the rotor position on the transmitter side and we will observe the rotor position on the receiver side also now you can see the difference here initially it is 0 0 30 30 60 60 90 90 but 120 117 voltage here okay 150 147 180 179 so which means the rotor positions are getting slightly lagged with your transmitters position why because why because is as the voltages or the positions are changed there will be lot of fringe effects that will be taking place due to the hysteresis losses 
so due to these losses you know the amount of required field uh, magnetic field that is required to move this position move this rotor part will be lost so that is the reason you have this difference now i'll show you the experiments now what you do is you change this to 30 degree position right now i have changed this to 30 and if you observe the rotor position there that will also be 30 right you see here that is also 30 but i am just slightly going close to this particular pointer it is not exactly 30 you see here it is not exactly 30 uh, just uh, we will hold on there i am rotating on the other side to 60 right you see is it 60 is it 60 on the other side it is slightly 60 one or so right then i am moving it to 90 let us see what is the position it's 91 i am moving to 120 here so you have to note down all these readings you change uh, your uh, transmitter side and then your rotor side will also change but there will be a small error here i have set to 150 but it is not 150 here it is around 148 or something so again 180 here there is a lagging because as the as the rotor position is changed the fringe effects are changing inside due to the hysteresis you are getting a loss so that loss is getting transformed as a heat and it is not getting transformed into a rotor position so likewise we complete this third experiment also sorry second experiment also now i hope this is clear now uh, now coming to the third part third part of what is that we are going to do is we are going to do the reverse what is this reverse is we are going to yeah we are going to tablet this one we are going to tablet this what is that we are having here is we are have we are going to change our rotor position now we are going to change our rotor position now now we are going to find out the voltage across the rotor position by holding on to our stator position. I will tell you the principle behind this now. Right? Now, what is the principle behind? Right? If I apply a voltage on the rotor side, when I apply the rot voltage on the rotor side, there will be an EMF that is induced across this. Right? And when there is an EMF that is induced across this, since the path is closed, an EMF will be induced across these transmitter sides, stator winding also. Here we must note that we must switch off the rotor supply. Okay. When we switch off the rotor supply, now the EMF that is generated by this will control the rotor position also. You see here, if I change, if I change the rotor side, my stator side will also change sorry uh, my tra transmitter side will also change why this is happening why this is happening is because we are not supplying any voltage to the dumbbell bell shaped uh, rotor part so that is the reason this particular field th this voltage is con controlling the field across this and this field is controlling this field and this particular field is controlling the rotor part of your transmitter so now what we are going to do is we can find the error using this. This is this experiment is called as a error detector. Okay. So the other ways also you can do, you can switch on the yeah, you can switch on the transmitter part and you can switch off the receiver part also. Both are same, right? Both are both the principles are same. So now what we are going to do is see here. I am going to hold on to this position to my finger with my finger. Now I am going to rotate this. Now first look at the effect and try to hear the sound that is taking place. So uh, you can put your camera closer to this to hear the sound. Okay. So. Can you hear the sound? You must have heard the sound, right? The sound was like you are controlling, you are trying to hold on to 
the rotating part right when you hold on to the rotating part that the effect has to reflect back to through some other way right so where is the only way where, where it will reflect back the only way it will reflect back is look at the circuit setup again we are supplying voltage here we are not supplying any voltage here right we are not supplying any voltage to this because we have switched off the rotor supply we have switched on the transmitters supply so there is a power from here right and that power is getting transmitted to the field windings here now we are holding on to this but when we rotate this what happens is and if we monitor the voltage across this that will give directly the error this is not moving this is moving so where will how can you find the difference in the fields the only way place where you will find the difference in the field will be on the rotor side of this now just keep a close check on this voltage right this particular voltage here is 59.8 when i change this on holding on to my stator side look what is the voltage it is getting 51 right keep keep having a look at the voltage and at the same time my right hand finger on the transmitter side i am rotating slowly my voltage is coming down my voltage is coming down voltage is coming down right 24 from 50 it came down to 24 look at my degree also i have moved to 70 degrees when i move to close to 90 degrees it will go to zero it will go to zero now it is close to zero it is 90 degrees and it is zero now now on the other side now it will slowly start increasing right it is increasing what is that you see a sinusoidal pattern between 0 and 180 am i right now if you when you experience you will understand that when I, till moving this knob to 90 i am facing slight i have to give my pressure and after this it will uh, it will move very smoothly right it is like you are going to the peak of a sinusoidal wave waveform and then dropping down to the negative peak right so here also you can see you will find you will find hard to go till 270 after 270 it will uh, go easily to zero right so from this what is that you get here is you get the difference between this position and this position and that difference position is translated into a voltage so that is the voltage that we are monitoring and that also you must note here right so this is all about the experiments so you again uh, if, if you look at the tabular problem what is that you need to do is you have to find out the rotor po position of your transmitter your transmitter's rotor position is zero you have kept it as zero right so uh, now you can change the transmitting position of your rotor and then you can find out what is the output error voltage right so the voltage that you get is nothing but the error voltage right yes